And so it's so incredible to, yeah. to think about what you created 25 years ago has basically become the soul of, of Chopin LUC or Chopin in general from the uh, from a, you know the movements whether they're in a more industrial um, yeah. uh, version or whether the capacity because to, for high finish which is so beautifully expressed in something like Ferdinand Berthu and of course all everything that's made for LUC which is cost certified in Geneva seal all of them have come together based on this decision you took 25 years ago. Many people would ask me at that time, what, now what, what are your plans? What are exactly your plans? Right. I said, we will decide as we go along. <laughs> in a way, that's what we did. Yes. But in a way, we also knew, uh, I had a very strong feeling about the, uh, the fact that as a family company, we needed to be independent. And that only authentic products would eventually uh, be appreciated uh, in, in, in the right way. I totally agree. Uh, and you know, with the proliferation yeah. of information as it is today, everyone's so uh, yes. attentive and scrutinizes every detail of a watch. And there's nothing you can scrutinize with any of your watches because they're no. authentic in every dimension. Yeah. And the young generation, as we both know, right. is even more interested in scrutinizing yes. and knowing the details of products all the way back to the source. And, and that's something we, yes, we can so easily explain today, but uh, it took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most inspiring stories was the opening of the manufacturer because I think any accountant would have said there is no reason or there is no tangible reason to do this. But I think the fact that you took the in completely intangible route and say, okay, we're gonna add that much value to the product because the end customer really deeply cares about the movement that is in his watch and that it's really important to them. And the fact that you know your dad or Crawford or you decided to say, okay, I wanna do in-house manufacturing, but I want the first movement I, I make to be a symbol of incredible authenticity because it's gotta be automatic, micro-rotor, bi-directional winding, cost-certified Geneva seal. I mean, this has always <laughs> been kind of the way you go, right? In the context of the 90s, there was no need. You could buy movements uh, uh, almost anywhere and then personalize and everybody will think that it's actually uh, your movement. Yeah, it was so, certainly not the easiest way to, to go uh, as a first uh, introduction, but um, for me it couldn't be, couldn't be anything else. Nowadays it makes perfect sense because if you don't do something in an authentic way, you're essentially not gonna reach uh, the public you're trying to reach with your product or with your service. And it's just about adding that much more value to what you do and to the products you create or to the movements or to the wine. And we also learned a lot by doing, by taking this route and uh, we added a, a totally new dimension to, to the Chopin Group. So uh, it's a typical family business investment which is a long-term investment and the manufacturer started off, uh, as I said, with a very small group. And then we added all the different uh, craftsmanships that we needed. Uh, we added, uh, you know, we, we had no idea how to polish a movement in the beginning. And uh, we, we learned from scratch and uh, formed the team and, and, and taught the and, and one person taught another person, and, uh, and so on and so forth. When you explained the strategy to your family at the time, 25 years ago, what was the immediate reaction? The immediate reaction was obviously uh, a bit like, you know, why, why do we need that? Or it, is it really necessary? Um, and this is going to take you a lot of time and, and effort and so on, and I... Uh, I had to make a pitch, just like how Fritz made a pitch when we, when he uh, really insisted on making the, the Alpine Eagle, you know. Um, and then 
I managed to convince the, the rest of the family. And uh, in the beginning, I just said, look, this is only uh, let, just for one movement. And then we can see how it goes. <laughs> so I kind of That's a good one. <laughs> sold the first step, you know, and, um, and, uh, and, and from there on, uh, I, I was sure that uh, things would clear up and uh, <laughs> we could actually, <laughs> and they did. Yeah, they did. I think by yeah. 2000, you were doing already the Quattro, right? And then 2003, yes, the Tourbillon. Uh, the Quattro, the Tourbillon, and, and, and many, many other things. Uh, and, and eventually, uh, a movement that is in another shape uh, here in this watch today. If we would not have started with uh, the 196, uh, honestly speaking, I don't know where we would be. Well, I have to say, I've really enjoyed my time here with you. Thank you so much for inviting me to the forum here in Florida. Yes. Thank you, sir. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks.